Hi, I'm Caitlin Orr, Carnivore on Instagram, and you're back for another episode of Carnivore Goes for Gold, uh, where I'm trying to eat all 101 of Jonathan Gold's best 101, best 101 LA restaurants in 101 days. So this is episode 26, a review of restaurants 84, 85, 86, and 87 on his list. Getting so close. Okay, number 84 went to Meals by Gannett, which is number 60 on Jonathan's list. Went with my friend Amy. She's Amazing Eats on Instagram. Check her out. And this restaurant's on Fairfax in Little Ethiopia, which I didn't even know existed before this challenge. But thanks, Jonathan. Here we go. Discovering new places as we eat. Um, so this is my first time trying Ethiopian food. Everybody was raving about it, but I'd never had it before. And um, it was amazing. I've literally, it's so unique and such like an intimate dining experience and just really really delicious okay so if you haven't been before like i hadn't you have um your injera which is like this ethiopian crepe type of thing and um my dog is here and basically it comes um with you pick what you want served on your your crepe so i got the chicken dorawat which is her most famous famous dish and uh she takes her sauce and it takes her like three days to make it it's insane it turns out she's vegan now so she's still laboring over it even though she can't even eat it herself which is must be torture i would not be able to be vegan but anyway this chicken dorawat which is like this chicken in this really like deep dark brown sauce sitting in the middle of this crepe and then we got the vegetable combination uh which is like goes around this plate so you have your big crepe as you can see and then the chicken in the middle all the veggies all around different like pickled things different like cabbages different all different kinds of veggies and so you take off they give you some more injera the the bread that's like holding all that together they give you some more on the side and you tear off a little like triangular piece they had to teach us how to do this because we'd never done it before so you take off a little piece you throw it down on the chicken like you literally throw it spongy side down I believe uh, you pick up a little bite of the chicken and then you throw it down on one of the, like, the veggie things on the side. You pick up a little bit of that. Maybe you can do two things, but you can't really hold too much in your little bite-sized piece there. It's uh, pretty small. And um, so then once you have your, your chicken and like which veggie you chose, you eat it. It's like a little mini taco bite for your, for your mouth. It's uh, amazing. Um, but you can mix it up, have different combinations, like see what works best together. Um, yeah, trying different different things with the chicken. So that was fantastic. Um, really hard to get in this place. You really need a reservation. We lucked out by going at like 5 p.m. or something ridiculous. And I think we snagged like the last table in there, but so good, you must go. And Gannett is like the most amazing woman. Um, I asked if she was there that night and the waiter was like, of course, like if she's not here, we're not open. So that is just such dedication to the craft. She's just so cool, what a sweetheart. There was like a window into the kitchen, so I got to go back and watch her cook, which is pretty cool. We talked about the 101 list. She's so excited about the project. She had been to a lot of the restaurants, even Vespertine, number one on the list, and she loved Vespertine. So it was just so cool to, to talk to chefs and share the passion for food. So this was an amazing meal and an amazing experience. I will be back. Number 85, I went to Kraft, um, Tom Colicchio's restaurant here in LA, and this is number 68 on Jonathan's list in Century City. I'd been to the New York location before when I was living there, but I had never been in LA. So I went with my new friend Nina, and basically we had like a holiday feast is what it felt like, because we kind of just like ordered a bunch of stuff and they sent out some extra stuff so we could try, and we were just like loading our plates, kind of like, it was like we had a buffet for the two of us on our table. So what did we try? We tried an avocado salad, a duck salad, Hen of the Woods mushrooms. These were fantastic. Oh man, we had roasted honey nut squash, like very delicious fall flavors, uh, Yukon gold potato puree. And then um, to like, you know, really overload us into the full on food coma, braised beef short rib. And that was so good, tender melting in your mouth with all our sides, so good. And then of course, we still had room for dessert because Kraft, uh, their pastry chef is James Beard award winning, he's fantastic, his name is Shannon Swindle and they must know how much I love sweets because they sent out every dessert, I believe, on their dessert menu. So it was like Christmas for me, basically. We tried the, what, what did we try? The red walnut pie, which came with cranberry sorbet, cinnamon ice cream, gorgeous. Uh, the chocolate peanut butter tart, which came with caramelized banana, Mexican vanilla ice cream. 
Oh man, um, we tried the Quince um, Brown Betty. Yes, and this is like a crumble. I've never had a Brown Betty Brown Betty before, but if you don't know what it is, it's like basically like like picture like an apple crumble, kind of like that crumble on top, but there's Quince underneath instead of apple. And uh, this came with Quince Sorbet. That was so, so tasty. And um, brown butter ice cream as well. And then they even sent us off with chocolate chip cookies for the road, which is just like the way to my heart, uh, cookies for later. So craft was fantastic. Just a overall great experience. This is, yeah, in downtown Century City. It was like business, power lunch happening, holiday parties were happening. Just, yeah, great, great vibe. I definitely wanna go back for dinner sometime. Number 86, I went to Soto, um, which is number 55 on Jonathan's list, and this is on Pico in Beverly Hills. I went with my friend Cassandra, and uh, Soto is Chef Steve Sampson, who is the chef of Rosso Blue. Also, this is his original Italian spot here in LA, um, still on the list, um, still delicious, and he's just expanding and doing more great things, more restaurants. Um, but yeah, let's. it's different menu, completely different from Rosa Blu, even though they're both Italian, they're different regions of Italy. So we started off with uh, some great cocktails first. One of them even uh, tasted like a butter beer. If uh, anyone's a Harry Potter fan, that was really tasty. Then we moved on to oh, some appetizers. We had charred multicolor cauliflower, just gorgeous, different like purples and white, uh, I love when vegetables are so beautiful and delicious. It came with pickled peppers and what else was on there? House-made pancetta, fennel pollen, uh, really great. Start us off with some veggies, totally healthy, uh, before this uh, digging into the other Italian entrees here. Uh, then we had crispy octopus, uh, which also had salami picante on it, fingerlings, uh, garlic broth, fior di latte, really great flavors and this octopus is like super crispy which is nice I love when it has that like really crunchy um, like you know the little tentacles it's getting a little weird but I love when they're like super super crunchy um, but then we moved on to um, some pizza and pasta we got the florata pizza which has the salami picante on it provolone and buckwheat honey so this reminded me of one of my favorite pizzas in New York slash ever uh, which is from Roberta's in New York if you've been. It's the bee sting, it also has like hot honey on it. So this totally like reminded me of New York. Uh, it was amazing, that like spicy, the cheesy, the creamy, just a beautiful balance, the like sweetness of the honey with the spicy salami, super tasty. Love this pizza, like so craveable, that mm, balance of sweet and spicy. Then we had the, uh, yeah, the pasta. We had squid ink campanelle, which came with shrimp and sepia, ragu, fresno chili, basil and breadcrumbs on there. Really tasty, gorgeous, that black squid ink pasta. Super, you know, seafoody, but not like too fishy. Just really, really good pasta. Cooked perfectly. And yes, of course, dessert. We had the uh, buttermilk zeppoli, which are like the little donuts, um, cute little like donut bites, buttermilk. Mm, so good. Uh, came with a chocolate sauce and then ice cream, of course, and they even gave us some chocolate mint cocktails which kind of tasted like the uh, Andes mints. I love those. If you love a dessert cocktail, this is a really good one. Um, yeah, so that was Soto. Number 87 went to Q Sushi, which is a, a Japanese omakase in downtown LA. You can't pick. It's all chef's choice, which is great because I really don't know my sushi. So I'm just like, bring it on. Let's go. So the chef is Hiroyuki Naruke, who is from Tokyo. He is like a master. He is so good it was so cool it's like a chef's counter seating i went for lunch the lunch omakase because it's like half the price i mean it's only eight pieces and it's like a hundred dollars it's like so expensive but um really worth it uh to experience once or i mean i wish i could experience more than that i'm sure i will but like for me i've never had such quality sushi in my life this was unreal like just the texture of the fish was so different than what I've had before like you know how like I don't know not to talk about like bad sushi here but like it can get like soft and weird but this is like it was like almost like crunchy that's not even the right word but just the texture was like so firm and like like it was like you like bite it like this sushi is like biteable it's got like depth to it this is like amazing amazing quality fish just totally made me appreciate sushi as like an art form. It's so cool and to watch him do it at the chef's counter doing his thing, like the fingers, like the finger work to make 
that sushi. Unreal. I could like sit there all day and watch and eat, but mostly eat. But anyway, this was amazing. Um, loved the pieces of sushi that I got to try. They were so beautiful. And um, you don't even use like chopsticks or any utensils. You just use your fingers. You pop the whole thing in your mouth. No soy sauce, no nothing. Just this is all about the fish. Like there's rice under there, but the, the piece of fish is so big. You, you're there for the fish. So we started with um, a bluefin tuna, which uh, was with sweet miso vinaigrette. Um, this was, you know, a little... Uh, little starter, get your palate ready, then a kampachi with onion, then the first piece uh, was a snapper, the next one was a Japanese strapjack, uh, the next one was wild yellowtail from Japan, uh, the next one was toro, followed by wild king salmon, uh, fluke, but this was the side fin of the fluke, which made it different. It's like, um, I think he was like talking about how it's even like crunchier, like even more firm than uh, the other pieces of the fish. The like side fin is just a little bit different of texture, which is really interesting to taste. Um, then finally we finished with salmon roe and Santa Barbara uni, which was amazing. And of course dessert, uh, there was Japanese egg custard. So this was amazing. If you're looking to splurge on some sushi, maybe you already do all the time, go spend your money here, it's worth it great like special occasion spot. The dinner is more expensive. Um, I think it's like twice as much, but it's also twice as many pieces. But the lunch was perfect size. I didn't leave hungry and I left just in awe of sushi in general. So yeah, that was restaurants 84 through 87. Getting so close, so exciting. Barreling on through Jonathan's list, uh, learning so much. Give it a thumbs up if you like this video, leave a comment about anything I should try at the remaining restaurants, and be sure to follow along on Instagram at Carnivore. Carnivore goes for gold to see behind the scenes with the chefs, more uh, food pictures, and yeah, stay tuned for the next episode. Thanks for watching, bye.